Enrico. Thank you. I thought many of the important issues did come out uh, in this session. Um, my comment is that the, I, I, I agree that um, the combination of I agree that probably the combination of inter financial integration, um, the financial integration was the main cause of the amplification that we saw. And I'm convinced that if you have countries sufficiently different institutions, the problem is not just volatility, but it's structural. I think what we're seeing is more of a trend. In fact, you have weak countries coming together with strong countries in the monetary union. That has several redistributive effects, and they are sort of permanent and they are cumulative. So, and because institutions don't adjust as fast as market prices, it means that the, indeed internal corrections are extremely painful and ultimately possibly uh, create a risk. So, I don't think we can talk about correcting the volatility without realizing that there is a trend. I also agree with what Jean says, that if we moment we think of some form of intervention to stabilize, they inevitably imply some net transfer. There is no hiding that. I don't believe that. Um, although I think the idea of weak institutions should be a bit broader than fiscal governance, I think that, uh, I think that is ultimately where there is a where the problem lies, because even in the countries like Italy, where the deficit didn't go up further, it just didn't go down, and even though the real rates fell enormously. Yeah. So what I want to come to is to make the following point. There is no question if we stabilize uh, the system, there will be net transfer. However, there is also a real justification, which is not quite the one that Paul makes, I think. I think my just, the justification I see is that in a monetary union with weak countries, strong countries have a fiscal benefit, eh, sorry, monetary benefit, an exchange rate benefit. And it's not just as much of a discussion seems to imply within the union, but with the outside world. So the benefit that the Netherlands or Germany have had from the monetary union are not well recognized, but in general equilibrium, it's clear that there are surplus so vast, even at a time of expansion of China and other places, only to be justified implicitly being in a monetary union with a bunch of losers, subsidize them. Now, so I think there is a legitimate case for net transfer. I mean, it's clear that if Oklahoma was not in monetary union with uh, California, the California dollar would be awfully high. So I think that is a bit more structural way to think about it than just to think of cyclicality. OK. Thank you, Enrico. Charles? A couple of questions. The first one to Jean. In a standalone country where the central bank is subject to the control of the legislature, how would you define when a country was insolvent? The next question I have is almost to everyone in the panel which is that in the discussions of the boom-bust problems that we've had, there's been very little discussion of how this was intermediated through the banking system. And in the doom loop that occurred, a lot of this arose out of holdings uh, by the banks of their own government debt. Now, under the euro system, uh, in which there isn't a central bank that each sovereign can call upon. How, in your view, should the risk weightings of sovereign debts actually have been uh, calculated? And according certainly to Paul, I mean, the risks were not zero. If the risk weightings had been appropriately applied uh, before the crisis, wouldn't the doom loop have been much less? And how, in principle, should government debt be risk-weighted under the euro system? OK, uh, Ben Friedman. I think taking a slightly broader 
uh, historical perspective makes clear that Paul is right that countries not only can but do change places in terms of the uh, vitality and strength of their uh, institutions, including their fiscal behavior. It's worth bearing in mind that uh, within the past century and we, indeed within the lifetimes of uh, many of us present in the room, uh, by far the largest debt default and need for debt forgiveness of any European country was, of course, Germany in a scale that dwarfed anything we're talking about now. Now, one can say that uh, we run our sample periods only back to 1960 or something like that, but that's very arbitrary when we come to addressing some of these more fundamental questions that Paul is asking. Okay, um, time constraints mean I'm only going to take one more, which is uh, Luigi. Thank you. Coming from a traditionally Catholic country, I'm quite happy that uh, uh, Father Paul de Graube um, <laughs> absolved us from, from the original sin. But, but since I have a, um, some, some Protestant blood in my, my veins, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I'm, 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 some, I'm not entirely relaxed. Um, the, the, the story about booms and busts. I think that, that fits well a number of the, the countries that had crisis during the the, the, the great financial crisis, but it not, does not appear to fit very well Italy, because there was no, I mean, there, there were little signs of excessive credit growth, um, private indebtedness was not high. Um, so that, that's not exactly, the, in, um, in real interest rates might have been slightly lower than, than, than elsewhere, but practically the, in, in, uh, the inflation rates were the same everywhere, so it, that did, did not seem to be a major point. On the other side, the side on the, the side of fiscal profligacy, uh, the, um, I think Enrico has already made, made this point. Uh, the, 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 the debt did not increase during that period, but uh, we actually, but it was high, and uh, it, there was a clearly missed opportunity of reducing it, of reducing of, um, of reducing a vulnerability in that period. We did re we did reduce it. Sorry. It declined. The, the, the debt to GDP ratio in declined countries, very, sure very uh, oh, well. Okay, it, it, it had declined before. It had declined yeah. before, but during that period, it did not decline very much, and it stayed at a very, a very high level. And uh, the, um, the, the another point I think is is really important, which is well, it depends on the, the, the period you, you, you take into account. Um, that was an, another point. Um, the, uh, the, the 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 performance of the economy in terms of growth and productivity had been very disappointing and satisfactory for a long period before the crisis. And it, it is at least tempting to see a, um, a connection between the uh, disappointing performance of productivity before the crisis and the very bad, um, the, the very bad uh, effects of the crisis in, in subsequent years. And that, um, and that um, takes in again the issue of, um, of uh, structural reform and possibly some, some issues of um, governance, or I, I don't know, I, 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 I don't think that there is a kind of original sin that cannot be uh, cancelled, but I do think that there are some issues then of um, economic policy, economic governance that have to be taken into account. Okay. So having said that, I'm sympathetic with many of the things that, that Paul said uh, about the need for a, for a functioning uh, monetary union to have other institutions, but, uh, but I do think that, uh, the, that, that there is more to the story. Thank you, Luigi. Now, it's very important to reward good behaviour, and Barry Eichengreen undershot his allocation earlier on. So I'm going to give Barry, uh, he's requested 30 seconds, uh, so 30 <laughs> seconds he will get, and then I'll turn uh, to Paul. Uh, two things. I wanted to um, first clarify what um, Ricardo Hausman and I, neither of us Catholics, meant by original sin. We did not mean that some countries are, for historical reasons, burdened by weak institutions and therefore shall always be so burdened. We meant that uh, small countries, uh, in particular, uh, find it hard to issue on international markets debt denominated in their own exotic currencies, uh, especially long-term debt, and therefore they're uh, doomed to uh, incur currency mismatches. Um, over time, uh, we, we have seen that 
problem of original sin diminish somewhat, quite selectively, for sovereigns and not for uh, corporate borrowers in smaller countries and emerging markets at all. So that problem remains, and it has an interesting parallel in the Eurozone, where uh, a lot of debt is, a, uh, in some sense, foreign currency denominated from the point of view of uh, um, what the domestic authorities can can do with it and and about it. On uh, Charles's question about um, uh, the doom loop, I do think this is a very strong argument for uh, um, demanding capital and concentration charges on sovereign debt, including the debt of one's own sovereign, where that last bit is uh, too often um, overlooked. As I understand it, this problem has not been addressed adequately yet, even a decade after the outbreak of the crisis in Europe. Uh, but, if, but if it is addressed, then uh, uh, you, you can, in effect, turn control of fiscal policy back to the national authorities, because if they mismanage it, they no longer doom their banking system to collapse and their economy to collapse. And in that scenario, uh, we don't need Paul's gigantic uh, Eurozone budget. Thank you, Barry. Now, uh, when I turn back to Paul just for uh, a very short uh, response, uh, please take into account, you, there were a lot of comments there, more than questions. So uh, I don't think we need to solve every uh, uh, loose end uh, in, in uh, two minutes. Paul. Uh, okay, thank you. Thanks for the comments. Uh, they are very challenging. They are very pertinent. Let me just take two of what Jean was saying about uh, um, in his third point, um, that individual fiscal stabilization may be a better idea than trying to create a budget, right? But the point that I was trying to make was that that's what you cannot do, stabilization at the national level, because of the instability of the government bond banks. Each time you have a recession, given that the intensity of the recession will be different, right? That's the asymmetry that we have. Um, some countries will be hit by a more severe debt problem than others. And then financial markets look around and they sell the bonds of those who are weaker and buy the bonds of those who are perceived to be stronger, making it impossible for those who are hit by the financial markets to stabilize, right? So that's the key. And, and therefore, we have to do it looking at the system as a whole. I think we, we are condemned to do it in that way. Um, on on, on the, the standalone country and the fiscal dominance point, um, yes, I do think that in crisis situations, uh, in standalone countries, the government will always prevail over the central bank. There can be no doubt about this. The, the, cent the Bank of England will not, when the government is in trouble, the Bank of England will not say like the ECB, first do an austerity program, right? No, the Bank of England will provide the liquidity unconditionally. Um, there is no, no question about it. And the very fact that this is known makes it uh, impossible for the markets to force the government into a liquidity crisis. And therefore, the, the British, the UK government can only be forced into default if it decides in a sovereign way to do it. It cannot be forced by markets into default. And that's the difference between standalone countries and members of the monetary union. Each of these members can be forced by the markets against their will into default. And, and we have to do something about this. That's the point, right? That's, that's our difference, but we may. Um, there were many others. Uh, Barry, I was disappointed that you said that, that it's only the, the small fish that can have original sin. I thought uh, your, your original sin story was certainly a deeper one. I mean, l look at the Eurozone. Small countries, they can issue debt in their own currency, the Belgium, uh, Netherlands, Denmark, and all that. They do that. So it must be something else than being small that produces. I thought it was really something more fundamental that these countries have a history of instability for whatever reason. Um, and, and that, so, but maybe we can talk okay. about the right interpretation of what the original sin is in Latin America. So yeah, I think uh, the okay. two minutes are... You know, thank you. Uh, so we've had a really interesting panel. So thank you to everyone. Uh, we start about 10 minutes late this morning. Um, so the coffee break will uh, conclude at...
eleven ten. So we'll resume at eleven ten. Thank you. He did answer, he supported you. Yeah, yeah.